the VCCA Spotlight. I'm your host, Jim Karras. Today, we welcome Dave Miner and Dave Sufer, both VCCA members from Ohio, to talk about the upcoming VCCA 60th Anniversary Meet. The two Daves are the organizers of our next anniversary meet, with Dave Miner serving as the meet chair and Dave Sufer serving as the assistant meet chair. Please join me in welcoming our two guests from the Buckeye State. Welcome, Dave and Dave, the two Daves. It's really great to have you today. Thanks so much for taking time, and we're looking forward to hearing a little bit about the anniversary meet. Welcome. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Jim. Yeah, oh, it's great. Really excited to do this. This is kind of a milestone in that this is actually the first VCCA Spotlight recorded as a feature for the VCCA Spotlight. So congratulations, you're a charter VCCA Spotlight guest. So tell us a little bit about each of you, why you chose to be the uh, co-chairs and steer the ship. You've got a little experience about this. Just give us a little background on that, and then we'll get started and, and hear a little bit more about the meet itself. All righty, I'll start. My name is David Miner, and I'm VCCA number 28. 1,873. I've been real active in our local region, Lake Erie, Ohio. So I live in the town where the Pro Football Hall of Fame is, Canton, Ohio. That's awesome. I have been a Chevrolet owner for my entire life. My first car was a 1940 Chevrolet business coupe, and I'm still driving it. My involvement on the, um, the national level began when I went on to the board of directors and stayed on for uh, three different terms. So I was on for nine years and I had the opportunity and I will call it the luxury of being the chair for a meet that we held way back in 2011 in Flint, Michigan. That was the 50th anniversary for the Vintage Chevrolet Club of America. And at the same time, it was the 100th anniversary for the Chevrolet Motor Company. So I cut my teeth back in 2011. And here I am again, 10 years later. Some people question my sanity, but that's okay. I have agreed to chair the 2021 anniversary meeting. Well, I can tell you that if it uh, even comes a fraction of the experience in Flint, people are going to really enjoy it. And then, Dave Sufer, you you are no stranger to meets. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm Dave Sufer. I live in the Toledo, Ohio area. I've been active in the Vintage Chevrolet Club since 1976. When I bought a Chevrolet 2 and I decided I was going to restore it, my 1936 Chevrolet Town Sedan, and I have that car today. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and and my number is a little bit lower than Dave Miner's. I, I'm 12505. It's been around a little bit longer. Uh, I am presently on the board of directors for Area 7A. I'm in my second term and enjoying it a great deal. I enjoy, I started up a region, helped start a region in Kentucky and another one in Ohio. So the Vintage Chevrolet is, Club is, is growing in our area. I'm very excited about doing this. I, I chaired the meet in Lake Tahoe, 55th anniversary meet in 2016. And though it was a lot of work, I had a tremendous time. I really enjoyed doing it. And when the opportunity came up, I says, hey, I want to be a part of the 60th anniversary meet and work to find a location. And once we found a location, I convinced Dave Miner to be the chair because he enjoyed the, the Flint meet. And I felt that between he and I, we could put together a meet that people would enjoy. Well, Tahoe was another just spectacular meet. So I, I really think members are going to be in for a real treat. So I guess the, the, the burning question is, is, are we going to be able to get together in July of 20? 21. Mr. Karras, you have just asked the $64,000 question. Here we are almost a year away from the meet, and we are still deciding and uh, trying to understand COVID-19. What we've decided as an anniversary meet team is that we're still going to have everybody register for the hotel, which occurs beginning on September 9th and days after that. So we're going to do the registration at the hotel, which costs you nothing if we have to cancel it. And then this will become a board of directors, a national board of directors decision as to can we safely and uh, effectively have our 
60th anniversary meet in July of 2021. So I will say stay tuned for details. We will try to give as much advance notice if it needs to be postponed. But as of right now, our fingers are crossed and we're hoping to hold it beginning July 18th of 2021. That's really exciting. And, and just for in case someone hasn't seen your promos in the generator and distributor or on the website, where is the meet being held this time? The uh, 60th anniversary meet will be in Bowling Green, Kentucky. When you hear about Bowling Green, Kentucky, you automatically think of Corvettes, the Corvette Assembly Plant, Corvette Museum. But it'll be in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it was the selection of Bowling Green was the result of that community is very, very excited to have another car club come down there. They are known for a lot of car meets because of the attractions in that area. So we have the uh, Visitors Bureau and the people in Kentucky and Bowling Green excited that we're coming and they want us there so that we have the excellent opportunity to make this a very enjoyable meet. You know, selecting a location for a large event, uh, the VCCA's uh, anniversary meet, is a job in and of itself. And, and if I recall right from my time on the board, there's actually a separate committee that helps pick the venue. Can you share a little bit with the membership about how how you arrive at determining a location such as Bowling Green? Sure. I can start out with that because I was involved in directly in this while on the board of directors. We did have a company that brought forth different locations and we evaluated those based on what they had to present and from visitation to those locations. And so it was not one of these things where you throw a dart at a map and say, we're going there. It's based on research and abilities to carry things off in these communities. And it was quite a lengthy process, and there were visits to the locations and reports back, and it was a board decision to have it at Bowling Green based on visits to various locations. Yes, some of the determination factors are, are one, how the venue itself lends itself to members getting in and out of the area, and, and then also the particular individual venues that are there, the hotel space, the you know places for parking and, and all the things. And then also, I would comment that a lot of it is also dependent on the reception, right? The support from the Visitors Bureau or the Chamber of Commerce. In some areas, it's really well uh, received. In other areas, it's a little more challenging. And I, I guess a town like Bowling Green, as you indicated, they were very receptive to having our club come. In Bowling Green, these people understand cars, and they just opened their arms up to us and provided any kind of information we wanted to make that decision easy. That's great. And, and Dave Miner, on, uh, on Flint, didn't you have really good support from the local community there as well? Absolutely. Their logo is Vehicle City, and they rolled out the red carpeting, which was absolutely phenomenal. Just a little bit of information for those of you who maybe have never been to an anniversary meet before. The board attempts to do one that we call on the eastern side of the United States, and then five years later do one on what we call the western side of the United States. So Tahoe was considered a western meet, and now five years later, since Tahoe was in 2016, we're doing one that aims towards the eastern side. So our goal is to assist people in their mileage and driving so that we're not holding them all on the East Coast, nor are we holding them all in California or on the West Coast. So that's just a little bit of information. No, that's great. For the meet uh, in Bowling Green, how about the host hotel? Do you guys have an idea on the property that will serve as the host hotel? And is there anything yet? I know we're still really early, but is there anything yet you can tell us about what people attendees can expect with the host hotel and related to that? Absolutely. The host hotel for the 60th anniversary meet is the Holiday Inn University Plaza, which is in Bowling Green. And the nice part about it is it is attached physically to the convention center where we will hold the ladies' luncheon and seminars and banquets and activities such as that. So the two venues are physically attached to one another. The good news is we have two hotels under contract directly across the street at a, uh, it's a very minimal used side street. So we can physically walk across the street to a Hilton 
and to a, uh, a courtyard by Marriott. So we have three hotels. All of the information, the phone numbers, the prices, everything is listed in the GND. So how about other hotels in the area? I, I know you mentioned the three hotels. If we have an outstanding response, is there still opportunity to come? And would there be other rooms available in hotels or accommodations adjacent to the, uh, the activities? Bowling Green, Kentucky is a university town. So there's a college there and there are lots of hotels or motels in the area along with a lot of places to eat. And since we will be there in July, it's not gonna be high traffic from students. So there are a lot of opportunities in other brands of hotels to stay in on the road leading towards the Holiday Inn and other parts of the the community and the places to eat there's a lot of them to accommodate the university during the school year oh that's fantastic well that's good to know let's hope that we have to uh search for a fourth and fifth hotel maybe that's not a good wish from the logistics standpoint but boy i hope as many vcca members as are able can make it and join us so that sounds fun thank you and then if we do have an issue with COVID-19, do you have any uh, sense on how the hotel will be if we have to reschedule the meet or, or even cancel the meet? Do you, do you uh, members shouldn't be worried about making reservations for the rooms right now? Uh, is that correct? That is correct. The reservations that will be made at or could be made at the three hotels that are currently under contract all have policies where you may cancel up to at least a week before the event and there's no cost to you, there's no penalty to you. If for some reason that we need to reschedule this meet and let's say we need to hold it in July of 2022 due to COVID-19 not getting under control, I will gladly talk to all three hotels let them know our our date change and I can arrange for the cancellation of all of the room reservations so you will not be charged any money. It's really great and that's comforting for everyone. Hopefully that won't be the case. I know some of this nobody yet knows the future holds. Hopefully we'll have an indication here in the coming weeks and months and by the first year, everybody should have a good understanding. And in any event, we'll certainly know well before that week cut off. So we're, we're pretty good on that issue. Absolutely. Great. All right. Next is registration. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how folks can uh, register for the meet and what the plans are for registration? Well, plans for registration are to have the meet registration form available to members by approximately the first of the year, January of 2021, so that you have ample time to register. This will be uh, referenced in the GND. You'll be doing either online registration or paper copy registration. What we have noticed in the last few meets, everybody, most people are starting to go to the online registration and doing it online, but we will also have the ability for it to register with a paper copy if you don't have the capability to register online. And we have setting up that registration form right now once we get the uh, specific activities tied down and so that we can put them on the registration form. So expect that in about January of 2021. Well, that's perfect. I know there's a lot of people behind the two of you that are really supporting this meet. It's a large undertaking. I don't know. I would say there's at least 30 people, maybe more. So for registration, isn't it Pat Mel from the Lower Michigan region that's helping with registration? Is that who's doing it? Yes, that's correct. And we also have some help from people out in California, too. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about yourself, Jim. You're involved. I'm happy to help, but Pat's got the bulk of the work. I just get to play for a few minutes. And anyway, so Pat is there. I'll, we'll try to, as we go through the, our topics today, see if we can identify those that are taking the charge to handle a subcommittee chair and, and give them credit as well. So, well, okay, good. The thing that maybe uh, folks may not understand is the anniversary meet is not an annual meet. It's as I think Dave Miner indicated, it's every five years. Can you talk about the anniversary meet and it, you know, every five years and why that was chosen and, and speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. The Vintage Chevrolet Club of America was formed in 1961 in California. And as the uh, club started to grow, 
at the 10th anniversary of the meet, it was decided that they ought to uh, begin what they uh, became known as anniversary meets. And so Indianapolis, Indiana was the site of the 10th anniversary meet. And they have been held every five years since 1971 in Indianapolis ever since. So the reason we do it only every five years, I'll give you an example. For our 50th in Flint, Michigan, we had 725 registrations. So with people flying in from overseas with all of our international members, we had a little more than 500 vehicles that showed up for the event. So to put on an event with 500 vehicles and potentially well over a thousand BCCA members attending, there are a lot of preparations to find areas to put the judging field and where we can have our car show, to find hotel reservations that can accommodate, in the case of Flint, 700 plus hotel rooms. And so we, as a national board of directors, search out members and a location, as we were saying, this one's aiming towards the east side of the United States. Some people would say uh, Bowling Green's in the Midwest. So consequently, it is a huge undertaking, but it is worth every ounce of energy that we put forward to make it happen. I'd like to add a little bit to that, if I could, Dave, is that we get a large contingency of international. You mentioned international. At Lake Tahoe, we had VCCA members representing seven different countries across the world. And for these people to make the trip from Australia, from New Zealand, from Germany, from England, from Sweden, we like to have those people there. So about every five years is a, uh, something that's doable. If we would not have that concentration of our international members if we did not, if we held it more often. That's a really good point. And then for the membership, the host of an anniversary meet is the national board itself. Is that correct? That is correct. The national board is the, is the host of the meet. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. What activities at the 60th do you envision? What can members expect when they arrive there in Bowling Green? Well, one of the big things is going to be the socialization. There, you see your friends from all around the world, the country. You see what cars they bring. But the activities in the area, Bowling Green, Kentucky, has a lot of interesting things to see and do. There is a number of caves, the biggest being the Mammoth Cave. There are museums, could be like the Railroad Museum. You also have the National Corvette Museum. The National Corvette Museum is the showplace for Corvettes, and many will remember that a couple years ago, the floor dropped out on a bunch of Corvettes and they went into a sinkhole. The sinkhole, that's right, yeah. And you'll be able to see when you go to the Corvette Museum video of that actually happening. You'll be able to see the floor that dropped out, it's outlined. You'll be able to see cars that were in the hole that they pulled out, some they restored, others they didn't. They're still uh, as they were pulled out of the hole. So the Corvette Museum is a, a site to, to see and enjoy and learn about the Corvette. Also, the Corvette assembly plant is in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And our hopes are that they will be opened up for tours when we go there. That's in a bit of flux now with conditions. So there's a lot of things to see. We will be doing a, a plaque tour, which will leave Bowling Green and head south to Franklin, Kentucky, part of the plaque tour. And you'll be going through some countryside to see that. And I'm sure that if you keep a keen eye, you'll be able to see the remnants of sinkholes throughout the whole country. Wow. Uh, area that you drive where the, they've actually, the earth has opened up and you got big sinkholes. Wow. And so those are some of the attractions besides meeting your friends and coming to seminars and having judging, car judging, display of cars. And that is a lot of the activities. One of the unique things about Bowling Green is it was the site that GM picked to relocate the production of Corvettes from St. Louis. I imagine that also played into the significance of Bowling Green as a location. Can you speak a little bit about production of Corvettes in, in Bowling Green and how that may inter interact with the meet? 
Our goal is to arrange as many tours as humanly possible to visit the Corvette assembly plant. As of right now with COVID-19, they are not accepting tours into their plants. Cross your fingers. Our goal is that they will find a way to get us in. And the assembly plant will have specific, if we get in, it will have a specific time when your ticket allows you into the assembly plant tours. That sounds really neat. Let's uh, cross our fingers and hope we can see the assembly plant. If not, we'll certainly be driving by it uh, as we head out to the different activities. So uh, I know we'll have the plaque tour, and that's a great opportunity to drive your Chevrolets during the meet. But I hear there may be another opportunity to drive uh, a Chevrolet, and and maybe at a little bit faster clip maybe than, than on the plaque tour. Do you have any inkling of an opportunity that may exist for driving cars? Dave Miner has been very actively setting up a additional driving experience for you and to the point that he actually had to experiment with what's there. And maybe he can tell you a little bit about that. Absolutely. The National Corvette Museum, which is not officially an arm of General Motors or Chevrolet, it's a 501c3 organization, they have decided to build a 3.2-mile road course that is directly across the street from the museum, and they're expanding into some other activities that we'll probably get to see by 2021. But the 3.2-mile track is a road course. Some of you have seen on TV Watkins Glen, New York. It's very similar to that kind of a road course. It has 23 turns on it, and you will have an opportunity, if you so choose, to drive your vehicle on that road course and never go over 35 miles an hour if you want to. And you will follow a pace car. Or if you want to be like Mr. Karras, you can get on the course and there'll be some laps done and you will not do over 60 miles an hour for the 3.2 mile course. Or if you're like Dave and I, we're going to probably sign up for the up to 100 lap sessions and you'll be able to do four laps. There's two straightaways, so on the straightaways, you can do up to 100, and uh, we have rented the entire road course and the entire track for Wednesday of that week. It's the day after the judging, and you have an opportunity to drive your tow vehicle, your modern vehicle, your antique Chevrolet, the only requirement, there's two requirements. One is that you sign a release that says you won't hold them liable. And the only other requirement is that you must have seat belts in the vehicle that you are on the track with. Even if you're going at 35 miles an hour, their insurance requires seat belts. So Dave and I have both driven on the track. I haven't told my wife yet that we did this straightaway at 98. Our goal that day behind the pace car, he did not go over 100. So uh, we clocked at 98 and had a ball. And so just for clarification, if members do choose the 100 option, they could drive their individual car for that option. Is that correct? Absolutely. They can drive a Silverado three-quarter ton truck on it. That's fine with us. I'll tell you that with the anticipation of doing that, I was successful last week in reserving a uh, Camaro for the trip because I'm going to be flying in. So, you know, as is the the Karis tradition now, <laughs> uh, we had a convertible at that we rented at Flint. That was a fluke, but we got it. So I had the discussion with Mrs. Karras, and she's given me the green light, and we are going to do. But the one caveat was not a convertible. We realized that didn't make sense in July in Kentucky. So we've got a coupe, and it will have air conditioning, and I'm looking forward to doing that because I did also have an opportunity to drive the track, but I drove it in a Kia Optima, I think. It just wasn't quite the same experience as I'm hoping for the Camaro. With that, I'll I'll ask you a question. Are you guys going to be able to uh, drive your older Chevrolets to the meet? And if so, what are each of you going to bring? I'll start with Dave Miner. 
I'm going to bring my 1966 SS 396 Chevelle, mostly so that I can put it in the car show for judging. And that will definitely go around the track. And then I'm also going to bring a 1999 six-speed Corvette. And that has already been around the track once, and I plan on taking that around the track also. Those are the two I'm going to bring. Well, that sounds fun. I, I want to throw a little bit in if I can interrupt. I was riding in that 99 Corvette, and, you know, you go on this track, and he actually had that in the rumble strips on the side. He went <laughs> off the track with it, and it was a very bumpy, very bumpy experience for a passenger trying to videotape this. I don't think, Dave, it, his memory is remembering exactly. I think I stayed on the paved part the whole time. <laughs> I, I don't remember what the speed limit was when we when the board was you know doing the pre tour that it does and I was in the rental car I think we might have been at thirty five but even in that rental car Sabrina was telling me to slow down so I don't know if she's going to want to ride along in the Camaro trip or not but I'm not going to slow down for that one. <laughs> you will note that in one of the turns the concrete wall is nothing but rubber where people have gone against it uh, coming off one of the turns. And if my last statement doesn't make it to the video, you know that I got uh, vetoed. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Dave Sufer, what are you going to bring for the anniversary meet uh, as far as a vehicle? What car do you think you're going to bring? I'm undecided if I'm going to trailer my 1927 Chevrolet Coupe to the meet or if I'm going to drive my 82 Corvette. Both have their pros and cons. So right now I'm undecided which car I'm going to bring. So that's actually a very interesting point. The plaque tour, not the vet wouldn't be fun on the plaque tour, but the 27 would be really cool on the plaque tour. And yet on the track, you probably would prefer the vet. Yeah, I'd rather not do that 35 miles an hour on the track with the 27. It just wouldn't be as much fun. Or if I could take the Corvette in there and go at those upper speeds. So I'm torn which car based on the activities we've got going on. And unlike your co-chair there, you're not going to bring them both? That was not my plan. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, makes sense. Speaking about cars, do members, are they required to bring their older cars? Can they bring a modern car or do they even need to bring a car? Absolutely. You're welcome to bring anything that you want. The real fun part about an anniversary meet is that a lot of members across the country will often bring unique automobiles. In other words, it's not uncommon to see a let's say a 1918 model d which is chevrolet's attempt at a v8 and no chevrolet didn't start making v8s in 1955 they made the model d way back in the team individuals will bring a car like that they will bring phaeton you will see probably split window 63 vets people will bring citations and vegas and all makes and models and almost all years. So feel free to bring a vintage GMC or Chevrolet, but if you're flying in or it's just too long to drive a vintage, come anyways, because it is a real opportunity to see some unique Chevrolets that sometimes only make it out for public view once every five years and, and they're not available for us to see. We see them in magazines, but we don't get to see them in person. So, but don't feel bad if you're going to drive a modern. One of the things that I'm encouraging at the anniversary meets is that on the day of the plaque tour, and the plaque tour is a driving tour. It's where we're going to go down to Franklin, Kentucky, and spend the day in a town that looks like the last time they did anything to the town was 1935 or 1940. It's just wow. a vintage sort of, sort of looking area. I'm encouraging members that bring vintage vehicles to ride share and encourage the internationals who often fly in and they don't have their cars shipped in. So you can enjoy the meat in a vintage vehicle. You can enjoy the meat in a modern vehicle, especially if you don't mind riding with somebody else. I'm looking for a uh, couple folks that want to ride in the back seat of my 66 Chevelle that day. So come either way. Enjoy the meat. So uh, in case she hijacks the Camaro and takes off, I, I can, can hitch a ride with you. 
Absolutely. I got room for you, Jim. Oh, good. How about COVID looming around? There may be concerns about, you know, one, how we conduct a meet and what steps we take. Can you share a little bit? I know it's still early and things may change about what safety measures will be employed for our time in Bowling Green? Well, it is a ways off and these things change as time goes on. As we get closer to the meet, we will be following the Kentucky rules and guidelines for safe gathering at this meet. Right now, we don't know what those are. Right now, everybody's in a flux of what do you do with the masks and social distancing. We will be on top of this and watching the state of Kentucky to see what their requirements are. And we will be adhering to those rules and guidelines at the meet. I believe one of you mentioned earlier that the local folks are going to be available and they'll give you the guidance that you need as we get there at that time. That's one of the advantages we've got in Bowling Green. We do have a region in Kentucky with some of the members living in Bowling Green. So we do have boots on the ground in Bowling Green and we will be getting the assistance. As a matter of fact, the group in Kentucky and Tennessee will be working with us to make this a good meet based on their knowledge of the area. Can you recall the name of the Kentucky region? It's the Kentucky Commonwealth region. Great. Thanks to all of those folks. And then also the Tennessee region. Is the name of that region? Do you recall? Tennessee Volunteer Region. Yeah, they're out of Nashville. That's perfect. These are great when we can get the local members to help. Tell us a little bit about what members can expect for the national judging. I know that having your car judged at a anniversary meet is kind of a special deal for some folks. Can you talk a little bit about what will be offered at Kentucky for national judging? Sure. Judging will be done on Tuesday of the week, and so that'll be the 20th of July. And it'll be held at the Motorsports Park, where the 3.2-mile track is. It will be held in their parking area. They have an absolutely huge parking area. And so two different types of judging will occur during the day. One will be the VCCA national judging. So if you are having a vehicle judged, you can get junior award, senior award, preservation award is what you're working towards. Or if your car is all or mostly original, we have HPOCF, which is Historic Preservation of Original Chevrolet Features. Those are for those basically unrestored cars that still have most of or much of their original patina to it. And then there is the driving class. A Chevrolet driving class, which we call CDPC. Then we have PCC, which is the personalized. The personalized will have their area to congregate, and they will also do judging. If you're a member of PCC, which is the personalized chapter, they will be there also judging the personalized vehicles, those that are customized and part of the personalized chapter. You will also be able to get on the show field if you're going to have a do not judge. So you bring a vintage vehicle, you just want to sit on the show field with everybody else, but you're not necessarily interested in having a judge, you will be able to, to display your vehicle. So lots of ways to go through the national judging. And then at an anniversary meet, you have an opportunity for each year. For example, if you have a 1963 Chevrolet Impala and you're in the class that accepts 63 Impalas, there will be a first, a second, and a third place award for that class. So each of the various national classes, you have an opportunity to get a first, second, and third place, which means a trophy. So lots of opportunities to participate in judging at the anniversary meet. Oh, that's fantastic. And who is going to head up judging at the meet this time? Our tradition is to have the assistant chief judge at the previous anniversary meet, who is Chris Sufer. Chris was the assistant in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. So Chris is now the national judge and the chief judge for the anniversary meet in Kentucky. And he has an assistant who is Tim Larson. Tim is one of our board members, uh, area number five, and he lives in Iowa. 
Oh, that's great. And how about kid activities? What are planned for the kids if members want to bring their children or grandchildren, is most of the case? Any ideas? And do you have someone yet that is going to head up children's activities? There's been a lot of discussion in regards to the children's activity because that really is something that many of the families that come to the meet look forward to. In Flint, we had a very active group that children's activity, they did a lot of different things with the kids and to allow the kids to enjoy the meet because they just weren't following their parents around. But they got to do activities. They got, they got to tie-dye shirts. They got to make cars out of wood. They got to do various activities at the meet. And in Tahoe, we had a group with the kids, and they got to do a scavenger hunt during the uh, judging process to look for a specific type of taillight or badge and the things that allow kids to enjoy the meet and be a part of it. We are working on that process right now. We have a couple people that have volunteered to come forward, and we're still working on the details for it. But there will be children's or kids' activity at the meet. Oh, that's fantastic. I think that's really kind of a just a nice touch, a special, a special addition to the meet that those with young ones, I'm sure they really appreciate it. The touring program, we're going to have a plaque tour, and we have the passport program. What options will be available for those that, you know, have passports or would like to get a passport are available for the anniversary meet? Well, that's interesting because we like to see people get their cars out and drive them to the meet. And one of the traditional passport activity is if a group of VCCA members want to travel together, there can be a tour master that can put together a request for a sanctioned tour to go from their home location to Bowling Green. We had a group from Toledo that decided to tour to Lake Tahoe. There were four cars in that group ranging uh, various Chevrolets and and they drove from Toledo, hit Route 66, US 50, and toured to Lake Tahoe and back. And all of them had passports. And they are very proud to have put in there their stamps for an anniversary meet tour to and from the meet. At Tahoe, we developed another item there that if you're coming and you are, you're traveling by yourself and have a passport, you can now apply for a solo tour and get approved for a solo tour where you can count the miles that you drove to and from the meet, even if you did not have another Chevrolet with you, but if you had a passported Chevrolet. And these are still going to, these are going to be available here. And if anybody really has questions on it, they ought to talk to their area director who can get information to them. At Tahoe, even though I trailered my 1936 from Toledo, Ohio to Lake Tahoe, I applied for a solo tour because my tow vehicle, a 2011 Silverado, had a passport. So when I left Toledo and went to the meet and then ended up going up to California and uh, Oregon and back to Toledo, I had 5,000 miles on it. And I was able to get a, a 5,000 mile oval for my touring passport. That's a great point is if you do drive your cars, make sure you get your passport because you'll, you'll excel in the program just in one anniversary meet. Yeah, just like if you've got your, you know, your 2000 2005 Corvette. You know, it's not old enough to be part of the judging process, but you can get a passport for it and drive it and get credit for it or your tow vehicle or any kind of vehicle that you drive out there. If it's a Chevrolet or a GMC, doesn't make any difference what year it is, you can get a passport. And to get that passport, just look in your G&D and there's information in there or talk to your area director and they can help you get a passport for your vehicle. Yeah, uh, Dave Cavanero out of New Jersey heads up the uh, VCC passport touring program, the touring committee chair, and Dave will actually be coming on the VCCA spotlight here to talk about the passport. So we'll be sure and cover how members can, can obtain a passport for the anniversary meet in that episode, which hopefully may be the episode that follows this one. So that's great. So I guess in a nutshell, if we have a change of heart and decide that the 64 Impala Super Sport that we have with its 327, 300 might be an alternate for us. We could drive it on the track and get passport mileage and probably catch up maybe to you in, in the passport awards program. Is that what I'm hearing? 
That is correct. Enjoy your cars, get them out. And that tour and passport is a way to do it and get recognition for what you do. That's right. That's fantastic. Do you expect that at Bowling Green that you'll see region representation as in past meets? That's always been something fun to see is the different jackets. And I don't know if we'll have banners up of the different regions, but the region involvement and support across the VCCA, do you expect to see that in Bowling Green? And we could talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. What we would encourage is that local regions would, if they have a banner, would bring that. We would find a place to hang that for the week and display proudly their banner. And that kind of fits right in with the internationals. Our goal is to encourage as many internationals as possible to attend. We often like to secure a flag of the various countries in which they represent and proudly display that at our meet, whether it be Australia or whether it be Switzerland, obviously Canada and uh, a variety of other countries. So we enjoy the locals bringing their banners, whether they're from uh, a California region or a region in Texas or whether there are international. So we welcome them all. And I guess as in past meets, you expect to have participation from the internationals, as you you already have indicated. Will there be any special activities? Uh, I know sometimes there's a breakfast or lunch. Do you know if you have anything special for the internationals planned? What we thought we would do is that at the welcome event, which is held on Monday evening, we would have a special presentation and recognition for all internationals that are at the meet. So yes, we will recognize them at the welcome event on Monday evening. Do you expect that many of them will bring their old Chevys? Absolutely, yes. And I say that because I'm considering all of our Canadian friends international. Yes. And so we get a lot of vehicles and individuals from our country up north, which we very much appreciate in Canada. We often will have one or two individuals that will ship a car in from overseas. Most of them do not, obviously, due to the expense and the effort to have their car moved safely from, let's say, New Zealand to uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. But we look forward to 50 or 60 or more internationals coming to Bowling Green. That is really true. And Flint, I think, is where we really saw that occur. There was a, a few. I don't remember the number, but I remember seeing a few. I actually judged a car. And I guess that dovetails into my next question, which is what is different about a anniversary meet as opposed to a nationally sanctioned area meet? The international participation is one thing. What else? Can, what can you say that makes the anniversary meets really just unique and special? Well, the anniversary meets are special because you wait five years to do it. <laughs> In the fact that the anticipation of the enjoyment of seeing people and the interaction of the internationals with the U.S. VCCA members, where at an area meet, you have people from the various regions in a specific portion of the country. But at an anniversary meet, you pull from nearly every state in the VCCA. At Tahoe, we had a person from Alaska. You wouldn't see them at an area meet. You have people from California. You have people from all states North, south, east, and west at an anniversary meet were at a area meet. You'd get them just from that area or maybe a, in a two to 300 mile radius of the facility that's being held at an at anniversary meet. The world's the, the limit. Some logistic stuff for folks to consider. For those that are trailering their vehicles to the anniversary meet, will you have accommodations for trailer parking? I know you may not have all the details, but is that generally in the plan? Yes, the trailer parking is in the plan. We have two locations. One will be near the host hotel, a premium type parking, and then we will have another at the car show, the judging field location. There will be provisions for trailer parking there. Some people like to bring their cars and not drive them to judging on the road. And so we do have provisions at the judging field, which will probably have most of the trailers. Now, it's hard to say how many trailers you'll have. At Tahoe, I had 125 trailers, which was far exceeded previous meet. So we had to make provisions for a large number of trailers. And so we had to select two different locations. And one we're considering a 
a premium location, the other one a location on the judging field area. I think that'll be great. And then how about those that bring their RV? Some I know are thinking about bringing their RV and trailering their classic Chevy, especially those coming from, you know, long distances. We have a group in California that I think that's their plan. Will there be any sort of opportunity for a campsite somewhat close to the host hotel or in proximity of the, the activities there in Bowling Green? Do you have any idea on that yet? Absolutely. Dave and I have personally visited two different locations. One is the Bowling Green KOA, obviously is a nationally run campsite program. So we've been to the KOA site that's in Bowling Green. And the other site that we visited is called Beach Bend. And Beach Bend is a multi-activity location. They have a very small amusement park that would be great for kids and grandkids. They have a water park. They actually, on the weekends, which we may not get to participate in, they actually have a drag strip at the site, which is NHRA certified. And so there are two different places where you can have RVs, you got all the hookups you want, and they're great camping sites. So those names have been listed in the GND, and we will list them again. So if you want to make reservations, you can go back to some older GNDs and under upcoming events for about four months in a row, we have listed phone numbers and how to contact both of those camping areas. Oh, that's fantastic. And then um, will there be a swap meet in the works? Yes, we do. We've got a swap meet planned. It will be in an area near the host hotel. There is a, a nice grassy area that we will have a swap meet in and with sufficient room for all vendors. Oh, that's fantastic. And there'll be information as how members can be a vendor or display at the swap meet available here shortly. Yeah, that'll be on the registration form, and we will get it in the GND when the details are finalized. In the last two meets, I know that we did an opportunity drawing. Do you know if we're going to have a, a similar arrangement for the 60th anniversary? Yes, we will be having a raffle for the 60th anniversary meet to raise dollars to offset some of the expenses. It will be a cash raffle. You'll be able to buy tickets before and at the meet, and we are going to be able to have the drawing at the meet, during the meet, and you do not need to be present to win. It'll be a cash drawing or cash prizes that will most likely have a first, second, and third levels of winning. And we have a gentleman that is going to be heading this up, and we just got to work out the details to get these tickets ready. God bless the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That is great news. I know you have an army of folks behind there. Is there anybody that you would like to specifically recognize, you know, your different committee chairs? We talked about Pat Mel and Chris Sufer. Anyone else that you want to give a, a nod to before we wrap it up? Boy, that's a tough one. As soon as you mention somebody, you're going to forget somebody. To put on a meet like this, there are literally a team of individuals that work in the background. Normally, you see Dave and I as the chair and, and the assistant chair to this. We have a treasurer who is Dale Carter. We have you, Mr. Karras, who have provided a whole lot of assistance in the background with registration and other activities. We have Michael Jones, who has been handling the various educational seminars that we put on. We've mentioned Chris Sufer and Tim Larson heading up the judging, but they're accompanied by lots of uh, team captains and individual judges that volunteer their time. The list just keeps going on and on. And uh, I'm reluctant to uh, give you the whole list because it would take too long. Uh, we appreciate all the, the folks that step forward and provide guidance and understanding and uh, logistical support to put this activity on. Sure, sure. And then as we get closer, will there be an opportunity for folks to communicate that their willingness to volunteer, like let's say for parking or the different jobs that you need, will have an opportunity to express interest in volunteering as well? 
Absolutely. On the registration form itself, there will be boxes to check if you would like to volunteer. If you have a specific idea in mind, you can write that down. If you're a little more generalized, I just like to help out. Someone will contact everyone who check marks that spot and we will see if we can pair you up with an activity and a skill level that you feel comfortable with and that you'd like to assist in this every five-year event. That's great. One of the things in regards to volunteering, as I told people in Tahoe, everybody wants to know what's going on, what's happening. If you become a volunteer to be a member of these committees, you get to find out things before everybody else. So there's an advantage to being a volunteer. You will find out more what's happening at the meet, you know, than before everybody else does. So there's an advantage to be a volunteer. That's a really good point. Also, people will have an opportunity on their registration form to purchase shirts and hats and items such as that. We will also have a Chevy store, a host hotel. Now, the, the VCSA Chevy store, great. And you'll be able to pick up your items that you've ordered. Also in there, we will have something that I found to be very good and I think everybody enjoyed at Tahoe was a basket raffle where various people from around the world and a region brought in items from their area and put them on display in a basket and then others purchased tickets to win that basket. This was a very exciting time for me because we had 700 people in a parking lot waiting to have their name drawn to win that prized basket. And that will also take place at uh, Bowling Green to try to uh, raise some additional funds for the offset cost. So in addition to the region bringing their banners, those regions that want to uh, make a donation to the anniversary meet, certainly encouraged and welcome and appreciated. And you can say they can do that by doing a basket or, or other items for that drawing. Is that correct? That is correct. My wife, Eileen Sufer, is, is heading up the store along with Janice Carter, and they will be sending out letters to each of the regions to see if they want to participate in the basket raffle. So that opportunity is available also. That's great. With the Chevy store in the past, regions were allowed to ship items or bring items to be on display and sell. Do you know if there's been any talk yet about providing for that again? I, I know there's some challenges to that and it may not be ideal, but have you heard any discussions yet from those folks as, that are organizing the store as to whether they're going to allow that? Yes, my wife has already put the list together of regions that have fundraisers in the back of the G&D and the letters ready to go out to those fundraisers to give them an opportunity to bring their fundraiser item to the meet and sell them at the store. What's the best way for members to stay in touch with the meet as it progresses and we get closer and learn more about all the exciting things that are going to happen in Bowling Green in July of 2021? The easiest way is to stay tuned and read each G&D, not every month, but hopefully every couple months. We will have a half page or a page article that explains some facet of the anniversary meet. So that's the first way. The second way is to send an email to vccameet at gmail.com. And hopefully Dave and I will answer those emails directly. Uh, the third way is oftentimes in the GND, I have my home phone number listed in there. For example, in the uh, June 2020 GND, it, it lists my phone number. It lists the email that you can reach us at. So there's three different ways you can contact us and feel free to ask questions. The questions have already started. A lot of folks in the VCCA, this will be hopefully your first anniversary meet. So we want to welcome you, but we also want to answer those questions so that when you come, you know what to expect and that you have a great time when you get to Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's great. I think there's also a couple other avenues. My understanding is there's most likely will be a thread on the VCCA chat, the forum. Also, I imagine you'll hear some chatter and some comments on the VCCA Facebook group. And then finally, the VCCA website, vcca.org. I believe Peter's planning on posting some information. So those may be other ways. Any final comments? It's sure been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, I'll let Dave start. Go ahead, Dave. 
We're excited to get this thing going, and it's a lot of work, but once you start in having getting it rolling, it's a lot of fun. It's just enjoyable to do this, and just want to make sure everyone feels welcome to come to this meet if you've never been to one. And if you've been to every one of the anniversary meets, please come again. It's an enjoyable time. You'll make friends, lifelong friends, at this meet. And I just want to echo all of that. The cars are fantastic. The ability to see some unique vehicles are a lot of fun. Very interesting. You get to up close and personal talk to many of the owners and find out answers to questions about Chevrolets and GMCs that you haven't been able to have answered before. But for me, the most fun is seeing all the folks, especially the internationals, but seeing folks that I don't get to see on a regular basis from the West Coast and sometimes from the middle part of the country. So please feel free to add this to your must-do list. And providing COVID-19 is under control, we hope to see you July 18th, 2021, which is a Sunday, through Friday night, July 23rd, when we hope to hold our closing banquet. And I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for enjoying Chevrolet. Thank you for being part of the VCCA. And I hope to meet and see all of you. Thank you so much for both participating in the first Spotlight as the first episode specifically recorded for the Spotlight series. We really enjoyed our time today. I think this has been very informative, been a lot of fun. I want to thank you on behalf of the entire VCCA membership for all of the time and effort, blood, sweat, and tears you've done to prepare for a great time in Bowling Green and then also in both the Flint meet and the Tahoe 55th. Uh, You both worked tirelessly in addition to the support of your time on the national board as you both served as directors and Dave Miner as president, and then to your respective regions and areas. I know you volunteer many, many hours in the club. Thank you for all of your efforts to make VCCA the world's best Chevrolet club. Appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and we look forward to seeing you in July of 2021. Thank you, Jim. Thank, thank you, Jim. Thank you for spending your time with us today. I want to thank Dave Miner and Dave Sufer once again for all of their efforts to bring us another memorable anniversary meet. There is no doubt our time in Bowling Green will be fun and chock full of great activities, good food, amazing Chevrolets and GMCs, and most of all, great folks from all over the world. Be sure and make your reservations and travel plans right away as you won't want to miss this fun-filled event. We hope you found this episode interesting. We look forward to bringing you additional episodes featuring the stars of the VCCA. We also hope you enjoy your membership in the VCCA, the world's best Chevrolet Enthusiast Club. Until next time, be well, drive safe, enjoy the ride, and we'll catch you on the back roads. Chevy, so make a day today to see.